welcome to another episode of Treasure Times Cruising. Today I'm going to be, one second, I'm going to be restoring Mike's spear gun just like I just like we did mine a few months back. We sanded down the whole wood. We even took a tool to wood burn and we wood burn the measurements actually in the wood. So that's what I'll be doing because next week is his birthday. <laughs> I'm gonna try to do it all the whole time without him walking in here. I don't know how I'm gonna pull it off, but I'm gonna try. He's got a lot of projects he's working on and we'll get into that in a minute, but for now, let's get to work. <laughs> two switches one that says sure one and sure two 
but we don't have shore tube. Oh. We never did. So I don't understand what that was for. Mm -hmm. They had the breaker panel not properly split, so we overload one side of the boat. But before I can fix that, I have to split the, uh, like do away with one of those switches because it wasn't doing anything. It was just taking the same feed and just splitting it in half. So I'm gonna take the bottom switch and I'm gonna connect it to the generator so we can select between the generator and the inverter because a lot of times when we're out, we'd love to use the inverter. The problem is, if you the way I had it hooked up to run right through the generator, when we started cooking, we overload the inverter, trip the inverter breaker, and then that was a problem. So we haven't been running the inverter. But if I have it on a switch, we can switch back and forth between inverter and generator, so that when we're not cooking. We can just run a burner and shut the generator off and save some fuel, which will be nice. But it involves a lot of rewiring and chopping and splicing and dicing. And while I'm in there, I'm taking out some stuff that was abandoned and wire maintenance. I've been working on this for two days and I'm not even close. It gets hot, so I can't have this power off for very long. Because I'm gonna get baked. That's all I gotta say about that. <laughs> this is tape. <laughs> it's just clear tape. Clear tape. Yeah. I don't want that wire to move on me while I'm working on it. I want it to stay put. This is a little, this is a wire that gets hooked up to a light that lets you know this will be the, for the inverter feed. It'll tell you, hey, the inverter's on. Turn off the inverter, dummy. <laughs> I'm running out of juice. Yeah. I ran out of juice a long time ago. Yeah, I really like juice too. I know. <laughs> it's a tight fit. Hmm, very nice. Very nice. It's getting dark out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm out of juice. I think you're out of juice. <laughs> we'll pick it up tomorrow. We'll pick it up tomorrow. Wednesday and Mike's birthday is in three days now and I came here with the intention of doing one more coat but I think it's actually done <laughs> I don't think I need to do it. I've already done three coats over the past couple days I've been coming in here and using this little piece of steel wool this is grade G 
grade 000. It's the finest stuff I could find. And I was just taking this steel wool and giving it like a once over just to sand down any roughness and putting a new coat of of this poly shade stain and polyurethane in one step. This stuff I used on my gun, my other gun that I did, and I think we did that over a year ago, and it's actually came out real nice and it's held up really well, even in salt water. Um, but I've been just using these brushes. I just brush it on and let it dry, <laughs> sand it, and then put a coat on. But I think I'm actually done. I came in and I wanted to do like the last coat. It's The weather's been kind of crappy the past couple days, so I, I didn't film any of it. I just figured I'd film the last step, but I think it's done. I'm not gonna do another another coat and I kind of don't want to do another coat because if I do it's so dark already you might not be able to see the numbers very well uh, but I think it's good I think it turned out really nice get a little close-up view here I think it's it looks really nice though okay now that Mike's spear gun is done done I can work on a couple more projects that I was working on this week. One of them is painting. I've been painting the boat in the back a little bit and also around our outside lights because I think when the lights were replaced last time, they didn't really sand and repaint because the lights were a little bit smaller than what was originally on there. So I've been doing that and just a couple other odds and ends things. I was going to do a lot of it yesterday, but I ended up just cleaning the boat anyways. You can see how pretty and clean it is. <laughs> it was a really, really big mess a couple days ago just because of all the little projects we were working on inside. Ow. Ow. That hurt. Get this thing all wrapped up. Oh, and I was going to share a little bit about these spear guns. This is an AB Biller and these are the guns that we've always used and I think the reason why we like them so much is because mostly because of the safety this little red lever here because a lot of other spear guns they've got it I mean they all have a safety on them but some of them are just like you know like a, a different type of lever or a button and they can accidentally get pushed and this gun um, see the safety is on now but even if you like accidentally just bump it it doesn't really go back enough to really I mean it's it's you could pull the trigger a little bit right now but it's not gonna go off because it pretty much has to be like all the way back here in order for the lever to completely go to release the shaft that's the one thing I like about this one and another thing is I like because it's wood whoops the gun will float after you shoot it because it's um, it's more buoyant than the, the water because it's made out of wood. <laughs> so it'll float, which is really nice because we've had times where, where we've shot a fish and it's like you just kind of put the gun down, try to get the fish and the gun just lays there on the bottom and then it make, it's kind of a pain in the butt because you're dragging it all over the place, all over the bottom. Um, I mean, especially if you're string as the tide is attached to it still so that's the one thing that we like about these guns is that they float and another time too is a few weeks ago mike and i shot a fish and we ran out of air if we were in sort of deep water but it was real murky it wasn't real deep but it was it was deep enough that you couldn't see the bottom but the only way we could really see where we were is the gun was floating halfway up in the water column so we can see it really well. I've been spearfishing out with a lot of different people before and everybody has, man this string is really tight, everyone has kind of their own way of spearfishing. Like some people like Mike and I, we leave the safety on all the time. I'm always thumbing that safety making sure it's still on because if the safety's on the gun's not going to go off. Um, Mike is a little bit different than me. He does the same thing. Man, this is really tight. I don't know why I can't get that on there. Maybe I'll have Mike do it. But Mike's a little different. 
he'll uh, swim around with the safety on but if he's coming up to like a coral head or something where he thinks there might be a fish he'll he'll flip it off and he'll get ready but he's very conscious of where I'm at to make sure that I don't um, get in in the way of where he's pointing the gun <laughs> but as soon as he finds out there's nothing there he turns that safety right back on but I've been out with people that as soon as they get in the water they turn their safety off and they're swimming around if I ever dive with people like that I make sure to stay out of their way make sure that they're well in front of me or are far enough away that you know because like when you do that it's like you can accidentally push the trigger I mean a lot of people are like okay I, I don't really keep my finger on the trigger but if you happen to have like a piece of your gear get stuck in there it could easily make the gun go off so you have to be very 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 careful <laughs> uh, I have some friends that are some people that I know and that actually happened to them it was one of the spearfisher spearfishermen that just swims around all day with his safety off because he wants to be ready to get that fish when he sees it and he his gun went off and right below him was one of his buddies the gun the tip of the gun was actually this far from the guy's head it's very very dangerous you have to be very very careful I know there's times where sometimes it looks like Mike and I are like not being real safe with them like but I mean there's three there's three things that have to happen for a spear spearing accident to happen uh, number one it's kind of like a three strikes you're out thing <laughs> number one your safety has to be off number two you have to pull the trigger and number three somebody has to be in the way of the spear there might be times where like I know there was one instance where I was wrestling with a stone crab and Mike had his gun he was shooting the video so he had it but his safety was on and his finger was nowhere close to the trigger um, but I happened to kind of move in front of the gun a little bit and he moved the tip away from me pretty quickly but a lot of people kind of freak out about that stuff but if you ever see something like that just know that we always have the safety on we always you know we never sit here with our finger against the trigger unless we're you know actually going to shoot the fish um, and I do try to stay out of the way and anytime I see him coming close I try to move my gun out of the way but my safety is always on and I'm never sitting here with my finger on the trigger so I know his technique and spearfishing he knows mine and I mean I I don't like to shoot uh, I don't like to take my safety off unless I'm like probably five seconds away from shooting a fish <laughs> uh, just because that's me you know I don't want the gun to accidentally go off but I know a lot of people that you know they like to sit most of the time with their safety off like that and I mean I don't like it but everybody has their own way of doing things I try to stick with the more safe way but anyways that's a little bit about how we spearfish I'm gonna try to get this thing on here now well anyways I'm gonna wrap this up and try to work on some of my other projects Mike's almost here, and uh, he's almost here, he's just like 10 minutes away, but he gets to see his new finished spear gun. <laughs> he's here. Hi, <laughs> Misty. What are you doing out here all week, huh? <laughs> what did I do? I did something for your birthday. Happy birthday. Yes, <laughs> Did it turn out good? Yeah. That's three coats. Yeah.
Sweet. I figure we can always add more if we need to. Yep. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I know, this is the best spot on the boat. Mm. Nice and cool right here. <laughs> Bleep that out. Bleep. <laughs> if I was under the sea, would you be out searching? Would you dive after me? Would you be hurting? Your arms like a life raft. Bring me back to the land Your heart like the warm sun Beating on the sand